Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade 9 academic students who are working on the measurement and geometry unit of the course. It's the fourth video in the geometry unit. In the previous videos we looked at the different properties and rules that you have to know as part of the geometry unit. So this video is simply going to look at a variety of different questions where you have to pull all your geometric information together to try to solve for missing values. So let's go ahead and look at a question. The first question says, a parallelogram is inscribed in a quadrilateral as shown. Find x. So my suggestion for working with questions is the first thing you do is always make sure you identify the thing that you're specifically looking for. So in this case, I'm looking for angle x. So I'm going to highlight that. And then I'm going to have a look and see what I know about angle x. So in this case, angle x is contained within a parallelogram but I don't know any of the angles inside that parallelogram, so there's nothing I can do to find x at the moment. So now I look and see what other information I do have. So what angles do I know? Well, I know an angle of 49 degrees right here and an angle of 48 degrees right here. So how can I use those angles to find anything else? And you'll notice I'm not specifically trying to find x first off. I'm trying to find anything else and hope that eventually I'll be able to get to angle X. So what I notice is that those two angles that I know are part of this straight line that I'm highlighting in yellow. And because they're part of that straight line, then they're part of a 180 degree total. So this 49 degree angle plus this missing angle plus 48 adds to 180. Well, let's give that missing angle a name. Typically, we call angles things like x, y, or a, b. If this one's angle x, let's call this one angle y. Oops. So now I can say that because of that straight line, 49 plus 48 plus y equals 180 degrees. So again, 49 plus y plus 48 is 180. And now I can simply do this math and solve for y. y plus 97 equals 180 degrees. And therefore, y equals 83 degrees. Now, if I had to justify this, um, how could you justify this other than saying, hey, look at my diagram? And you may not have highlighters and green markers and all that. So I would say perhaps straight line. And that sort of indicates to someone that maybe I don't know the formal name for a rule, but I know that I used a straight line to get this equation. And that's perfectly fine as a justification as to why y equals 83 degrees. So now that I know the value of y, let's look back at the diagram. So now for me, I'm going to keep erasing just so that you can clearly see what I'm doing each step. Obviously, if you're handing this in for marks, don't erase work that you're doing, right? If you keep erasing what you're doing, then no one can follow your logic. But you guys aren't using, you know, giant yellow highlighters the way I am. Now that I know what Y is, and again, I'll put Y right here. Now I have one of the angles in my parallelogram, which means I can now think about X. In a parallelogram, we have parallel sides. And because we have parallel sides, we have the parallel line theorem in play. And if you can see, I've just traced out a C pattern. And we know that the angles in a C pattern add to 180. So again, I might write C pattern as my justification. And then I can say that X plus Y equals 180 degrees. And since I know that Y is 83 degrees, then I can solve for X quite quickly. So 180 minus 83 means that X is 97 degrees. And that's what I wanted to do in the question. So hopefully it's clear not only that you have to use different rules and different properties in one question, but you also have to try as best as you can to justify what math you're doing. So let's look at the next question. It says in the figure, BC is extended to D. So BC is a line segment that goes from B to C. And it says this line segment is extended further until it hits point D. Yep, we can see that. So BC actually continues on till D. So that's a straight line. Then it says that angle, and that's what this symbol means, angle 
B, A, C. So if you trace from B to A to C, you've traced out an angle, and that angle is 42 degrees as indicated in the diagram. Similarly, if you trace out angle A, C, D from A to C to D, you've traced out angle 105. Good. Now, here's a question for you. And before we do any math, I want you to think about this. Why didn't I just call this angle C? Because this is where C is. So why didn't I just call it angle C? Why is it called this big fancy word? Well, the problem is, if this is angle C, what the heck is this? So you can't keep calling things angle A or angle B or angle C because sometimes that causes confusion. That's why the angle has a three letter name so that you can trace out entirely what that angle would be. So for example, what would this angle be? Well, I could call it angle A, C, B, or I could call it angle B, C, A. Both of those names tell you that I'm talking about this angle. So what I like to do is I actually like to call angles by names like X and Y. So let's do that. Let's label our two angles missing from the diagram X and Y. So X is the angle I'm trying to find. And what do I know about X? I know that it's contained within a triangle and that the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180. So I know that eventually I'm probably going to have to do 42 plus X plus Y. But before I do that, I think I have to find out what Y is. So Y is not only part of this triangle, but it's also part of the straight line formed here. So let me highlight that in yellow. Here's my straight line. And we know that the angles in a straight line must add to 180. So that means, and again, I'm going to justify it by simply saying straight line. I know that Y plus 105 equals 180. So notice how important this communication is. If I didn't label this Y, how on earth would you show someone what you're doing? Because what I see a lot of students do is this. And that's great. I mean, it's the right answer, but honestly, this communication is really, it doesn't explain to anybody what you've done, where this number came from, why 105 is being subtracted, or what angle you're working on. So please make sure you're watching and you're paying attention to the way that I'm communicating my geometric mathematics. Um, geometry is one of those places where communication is much more important than in other fields. Almost every question involves you explaining how you got that. So again, we knew that y plus 105 was 180. So I'm going to do 180 minus 105. So now I know that the angle y is 75 degrees. And again, now look back at where x is. x is part of a triangle. So now I can say triangle. We know that the sum of the angles in a triangle is 360. So therefore, x plus y plus 42 is, did I say 360? I hope you caught that and said, no, you're wrong, because that was wrong. The sum of the angles in a triangle is 180. So therefore, x plus y plus 42. So x plus y plus 42 is 180. Now I know what y is. y is 75. So I can sub that in. And then I can do the math and solve for x. So <clears throat> 42 plus 75 is 117. Oops, what should, this is a plus sign, my bad. And then subtract 117, 180 minus 117 is 63 degrees. So I solved for x and I communicated my logic. Let's look at the next question. It says a Ferris wheel has six sides of equal length. The exit ramp of the Ferris wheel is in the shape of a trapezoid and has an angle of incline of 20 degrees. What are the values of x and y? So they've already given us x and y, so I don't have to label them myself. But there might be other angles that need a label, so I'll probably use z if that happens. OK, so again, what do I know? So first, let's think about the information given to me. I know that this is a six-sided polygon where all the sides are equal length. So that might be important, maybe not. But it sure is a good piece of information, because if I have a six-sided polygon, where all sides are equal length, I can use this rule to talk to you to find out 
the angle of the interior, the measure of the interior angles. Now, what else do I know? I know that the exit ramp is a trapezoid. So find the trapezoid. Here's my trapezoid. So this is the exit ramp, and it's a trapezoid. So what do we know about a trapezoid? Well, a trapezoid has two opposite sides that are parallel, and the other sides are not parallel. So probably some sort of parallel line system rules are going to come into a play. So again, look at carefully where X is. X goes from here to here. It's kind of this outside angle. Y goes from here to here. It's part of the trapezoid. So can I find X? Can I find Y? Well, in this case, I know how to find Y because Y is part of a trapezoid. I don't know how to find X yet. Don't think that just because um, just because X comes before Y alphabetically that you have to find X before you find Y. In fact, I don't think it's possible to find X first in this question. So let's think about this trapezoid. And I'm just looking, do I have a trapezoid shape? No. Okay, no problem. I'll do it by hand. Uh, no, I'll use my magic pen. Where's it? Here it is. Okay, so I have a trapezoid. And I'm just going to redraw it. Isn't this nice? This is a magic pen that makes everything I do look like I know what I'm doing. There's my trapezoid. And again, we know that a trapezoid has parallel sides here and here. We were told that this was 20 degrees, and we know that this is called Y. So what are we going to do to find Y? Well, if you have parallel lines, think about the parallel line patterns. If I say, if I know this is parallel to this, I can say that this is a C pattern. So because of parallel lines, C pattern, I can tell you that Y plus 20 equals 180 degrees. So again, that's something we reviewed in a different video, that if you have parallel lines and you can find the C pattern, then you have angles that add to 180. And that tells us that Y is 160 degrees. It's good. So I justified it both here and in my diagram, and now I know the value of Y. Okay, so now we're going to find X. So let's go back to the original diagram and see what we can do about finding X. So I have the value of Y now. I know that this is Y. And because Y and X kind of touch each other, there's probably some reason why I have to know Y to know X. So have a look at the diagram. In fact, I'm going to zoom in for you. Isn't that nice? Look what I have here. I have this and this sort of look like I'm making a circle, don't they? Well, let's continue that circle. So in other words, this angle here is the third part of that circle. So if I start here, I have X, and I have Y, and then I have this unknown green angle. So let's give that unknown green angle a name. I'm going to call it Z. So now I know that X plus Y plus Z form a full circle. Oops, ignore this. Don't know how that got there. Do, 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 do. So we know that X plus Y plus Z equals 360. And if I had to justify that, I would say it's a circle. So let's look at the diagram. And in fact, I'm going to redraw that diagram for you a little bit clearer down here. So here's that hexagon. Remember, it's a regular hexagon, so all the sides are the same length. And then I have a line like this, and this is 160, this is X, and this is Z. Now, if I could figure out the measure of Z, I could use that to find X because of this formula up here. And what you should know is that this is a regular polygon, which means all the angles are the same. What is the sum of the angles in a six-sided polygon? Well, we have a formula for that. It's 180 times 6 minus 2. So the sum of the angles in a six-sided polygon is 720 degrees. Now, because it's regular, there are six sides. Ignore this. And I can just divide each side evenly into six pieces. So that means that each angle is 120. So now I know that the measure of angle Z is 120. So I can say that 160 plus 120 plus X equals 360. So X equals 80.